All right, so check it, right? Irv Gotti confirms not only did DMX have COVID, he was sick from COVID, but in fact, he got a bad dose of crack. Now first, big time YouTuber, it is irresponsible of you to report false facts. It takes away all of your credibility and it gives you no respect as any sort of podcast journalist. Unless you're here for sensationalism and you're nothing more than a walking tabloid. Then admit that in your disclaimer. But you cannot go around making Judas statements about a man's death, knowing that his family has not released any statements. Wake up, man. You don't like people talking disdainfully about you. You're always up in your feelings on your videos and rightfully so with people attacking your personal character and your integrity. But when you do things like this, you give credence. Next video. In that hit moment, after hit after hit oh, with Ja Rule on that wrong. Let me give you this. Rule 336, Ja's album Rule 336 mm -hmm. is my greatest work I've ever done. Because here I am a part of Jay-Z and Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. Jay-Z sells with Hog My Life, I Give Him Can I Get Her, which was Ja's record that I gave to him. He sells eight, nine million albums. He's, he, he flirts with diamonds. I do DMX, I sign DMX. The dark and hell is hot. Seven million worldwide, he dropped flesh in my flesh. So the two biggest rappers in the game that I helped had a hand in in creating and making who they are is now in my way. Why do you insist on ever listening to anything that comes out of Irv Gotti's mouth? He's a liar by nature and he's a Judas for sure. That man said, and I quote, what do you think was your most successful record? Watch what Irv Gotti says next. But before that part, the two artists that you helped create, they are now in your way? What kind of thinking is that, man? Who says that about people that were colleagues and friends and helped your career as well? Let's peep this Monterey Jack in the flesh. Ooh. Wait a minute. You have someone like DMX who's like Jaws taking my style, which he wasn't. So he's bombing on Ja. So when I make rule 336, every little thing that we do, don't, don't, don't you be between me and you. Where would I be without you? I only think about you. If I cry, you cry. Both Jay-Z and more importantly, DMX, I, I went to X, I said, nigga, I played, you will never make these records. You stop saying my man is like you, stop, stop, stop. But if you know X, X don't like any rappers. <laughs> X will laugh with you, joke with you. Tell him that you rhyme, he's at you. That's just his competitive drive and spirit that that microphone belongs to me, no one else. So, when I made 336, I was like, nigga, y'all niggas would never make these records. And I was saying that to X. You'll never make, where would I be without you? It's not you. And when that album came out, went number one and fucking sold like 7 million worldwide, 
it's my greatest work. It's my greatest work. <laughs> then we Man. did the I'm Real record. Then it was just a hit spree mm-hmm. after that because now I had a sound that I've created that was my very own sound. It's Judas time. So let me get this straight. The fat rat with all the cheese. Inadvertently, what you were saying was that in every way possible, DMX was the spark for your career. Whether he was the motivation to go against him or be for him. Playing an bullshit game of tug of war in your own mind with yourself. But you were still getting paid from everybody. While being a Judas behind their backs. And I wonder what would happen if Jaws record would have flopped. Then how would you be talking? You and Ja probably wouldn't be friends right now. You'd have probably went back and tried to suck Rockefeller off or something. Because nobody talks about their colleagues like that. Unless they were using them. Never heard Damon Dash say that about you. Never heard Jay-Z say that about you. Never heard DMX really even speak badly or oddly on you, Irv. He said that Ja Rule stole his style. Now, you can just ask people, not your narcissistic ego, the guy who sold eight, nine million records with Jay-Z. No, not that guy. Ask the public. See, if you run into any rappers, they're going to be scared to tell you the truth because they're going to want you to be their influence to get in the game. Hell, I would. Irv, you're a very intelligent man and you know a lot about music. But you, you also know a lot about stabbing good people in the back, though. Because for four years, man, this, this interview was four years ago, man. Four or five years you've been on a DMX slander campaign. And that could only be the reason why Poppy would reference you. And I haven't even got into the fact that you look alike. The one characteristic that all y'all have, whether you shave them down, whether you try to trim them, those high brows. You understand? So that was my greatest work. TV. Yo. What's up, baby? What up, Sonny? <laughs> What's the deal? So I hear Crack Man is calling up there talking shit, huh? Yeah, last night on the drama hour with K Slay. And Wreck. I mean, TV. it's like this. I was I was heated about five minutes ago. I was really enraged and shit. Right. I got a chance to sit down. I'm smoking a blunt now. I done calmed down. And I'm going to give it to you the real, the real. This right here and wreck is TV. out of line we're talking about dmx we're talking about dmx crack man x okay this is out of line first of all he's been making records about me from the beginning of my career i never had to make a record about him you know why because he can't with me you understand he never could and he never will be able to and it's hurting him right now that i'm bigger than him it's killing him right now that i'm bigger than him you know why? Because we were friends, and friends do, when friends do things together, you understand? When he blew up, he was supposed to help me come up. You understand what I'm saying? But he didn't do that, and I did it on my own, and I'm bigger than him, and I'm better than him, and now he's on the radio mad. He's mad at me, he's mad at Nelly, he's mad at Eminem, he's mad at any motherfucker that's selling more records than him. You understand what I'm selling? You understand what I'm saying? And the, and the reason being is because he's a fucking bitch. This is how bitches act. You understand? They get mad when they see other bitches with nice shit. This is what he is. So you know what? I'm going to give him what he wants. He wants a piece of me? Come on, X, come get it. You know me. I've known you for years. You ain't never been a threat to anybody. You see? And I know it. And everybody who knows you knows it. And you know it. So however you want to do it, dog. If you want to do it on the street. Oh, and don't close the street option. See, don't close the street option, chump. Let's leave that one open. Leave it wide open. So we can do it on the streets. We can do it on the mic. We can do it however you like it. Because that's how I do it. Damn right. You understand? TV. Everybody wants to make comparisons to Pac and X and me. Y'all just want to see Pac come back? Y'all want to see this? Sh- it's here, n- 
it's here. And I'm taking it to the streets, to the mic, any way y'all like it. The hostility in that man's voice was absolutely fucking ridiculous. I mean, I seen some niggas mad before. But that nigga was upset. How much y'all want to bet a blood vessel bust out his head when he was screaming like that? How much y'all want to bet that nigga went into straight high blood pressure phobia type of thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Napoleon Complex is real. Ja Rule is 5-1. Who gives a shit what he's talking about? Rest in peace, DMX, once again. And, you know, at the end of the day, Murder Inc. was jealous of DMX. And that's why they still put out false statements even after the man's death. <laughs> that's what a fake thug would do.